In a 1999 address at the American Association for the Advancement of Science in Washington, D.C., American physicist and Nobel laureate Steven Weinberg famously said, quote, Religion is an insult to human dignity. With or without it, you would have good people doing good things and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion, end quote. Now, that's one of those quotes that atheists tend to love when they're new to atheism and tend to kind of hate once they've been here for a while. I, it's problematic, of course, because it's so effortlessly refutable. It simply isn't true. Right? Religion is just one of the many forms of lying that can have that effect. Political ideology, bigoted propaganda, garden variety deception. Those can all be used to push a good person over the line into an immoral act. So the absolute nature of the quote becomes ready fodder for the religious apologist. That being said, that refutes the quote, not the point. I mean, you can back way off the absolutism and it's still saying something pretty damnable about religion. And I mean, yes, Weinberg does over the state the case, but in a very real sense, he also kind of understates the case. Because, yes, religion can absolutely be used to manipulate people into immoral acts. Hell, in its present form, you might even say that that's what it was designed to do or more accurately what it evolved to do. But it also makes evil people do evil stuff. I mean, the, the dichotomy between good people and evil people is obviously problematic by itself. We're not a fucking George Lucas movie. But, but we have to remember that religion is just as good at making bad people worse as it is at making good people bad. That may not seem like an important point to make, but I'd argue that it is. See, when we think of religion making a good person do a bad thing, we normally think of it as a tool. Right. Like somebody would be using the religion to manipulate a person into doing something that might otherwise violate their sense of morality. And while that certainly does happen, and while religion is a super useful tool for doing exactly that, that isn't the only way it makes people worse. Unlike most tools, religion doesn't need anyone to wield it. Its evil making effects can work even when the damn thing is sitting on a shelf. Take, for example, the text messages recently released by the January 6th committee between Ginny Thomas and Mark Meadows. So to clarify for foreign listeners and people blissfully unplugged from the news cycles, these are texts that were sent to Donald Trump's chief of staff by the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas in the wake of the 2020 election. And the overriding theme of the messages was you need to overthrow the democratic process and install Trump as a God King, complete with sources that Alex Jones would be embarrassed to cite. It's as ridiculous as it is terrifying. But the one thing that stands out the most to an atheist like myself is the way that every push towards insurrection was bedecked with religious language. Their entire conversation is loaded with allusions to the apocalypse in reference to the King of Kings triumphing over, you know, the will of the American people. Now, clearly nobody would accuse Mark Meadows or Ginny Thomas of being good people. They would no doubt be doing evil things regardless of religion's influence. And there was no like nefarious puppeteer pulling their strings here. I mean, there kind of was in the form of Trump. But the key is that like they were the nefarious puppeteers in this situation. They were manipulating themselves and one another into doing a thing that they were already actively doing. But religion's convenient proximity no doubt provided an ethical bomb that both of them needed. Even the worst of us know that a coup against a democratically elected government is a bad thing. But that's no problem if you remind yourself that the only vote that really counts belongs to Jesus. And throughout those texts, you would see claims about Christ's role in electing Donald Trump conspicuously following any hints of insurrection. Of course, the overtly religious nature of their justifications caused many would-be apologists in the media to take umbrage on behalf of the King of Kings, right? Joe Scarborough notably devoted several minutes to how offended he was that somebody would dare to invoke the name of Christ the Savior in their effort to overthrow the government, like as though they didn't storm the Capitol carrying Christian signs, wearing Christian garb, chanting Christian slogans, waving Christian flags, and saying Christian fucking prayers, See, the most terrifying thing about religion isn't that it encourages people to do evil acts, it's that it blinds people to evil acts. Even now, with an avalanche of evidence that Christian nationalism is the greatest threat to our country, the overwhelming majority are still constantly surprised every time they're forced to reckon with that fact. We've spent way too long equating church attendance with morality and Christianity with goodness, such that no matter how much evidence shows us the opposite is true, we can't fucking see it. I mean, I mean, one half of America's political system either suffers from apocalyptic delusions or is beholden to people who suffer from apocalyptic delusions. 
The fact that our foreign policy is, at least to some degree, dictated by the fact that Christians think the Jews have to be in charge of Israel for the world to end correctly should be the most terrifying thing any of us knows. But America has a blind spot, a religion-shaped hole in its head, if you will. And so we treat policies informed by a literal belief in the biblical apocalypse as, at best, quaint. So yeah, Steven Weinberg was wrong. Religion was so much worse than he was giving it credit for.